Good to see you, everyone. And let's get going. So the key chart going tomorrow with uh, the CPI and LEI on Friday, obviously, is going to be that big inverted and shoulder that I've been discussing with you guys for weeks and weeks on the Z and the bonds. Look at this shoulder here. That was the shoulder, and it took about three, four months. See, July, October, you know, and then all the way here, roughly March. Okay, so it's like almost a six month shoulder head. And here we made a little bit of a lower shoulder. See, but that head and shoulder pattern is still very much intact. Why? Because look. If I put a um, parallel bar on the division of thirds from our patented indicators on the probability power indicator right there, look, the shoulder is holding well just, just a tiny bit above that shoulder. So what's going to happen for the rest of the week, guys, is that shoulder. That shoulder is critical. If we hold above this 108, roughly 27, right? On the bonds, be careful shorting the market. Because if the bond goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, and they maintain the synergy of that shoulder from the division of third here to the division of third here, the gray boxes on both sides, right? It is very, very similar to here, right? This shoulder and this is the entire head so you got to be very careful even if the cpi numbers are not good you could have initially deep like a quick deep a quick week on the downside and this is where i would add more on the uh, more of the stuff that i want so what are the stuff that i want tesla 158 170 i bought a little bit more of a tesla this week, and I'll show you, and we'll look at the stock screener for best opportunity in cryptos and stocks, right? I added a little bit on my position on ARM, which is an AI play, right? So each time we are going to dip, if the CPI number is above the 2.4 to more, right? At the beginning, the gap is going to rock the market. If it rocks the market, it could be a 5.15 SPY, 5.18 SPY support back up, right? And that dip, there'll be people buying. People are buying the dip. There's so much money on the sideline right now that people are buying the dip. So the short-term power train signal has turned up on the bonds. See, institutional blue, major blue, minor blue but we still have the long-term down. So to me, the key is going to be that head and shoulder division, and especially that white line from the previous dip here, okay? You have, of course, the divisions here from the probability power indicator. So let's say they dip again a little bit from that 108.27. We want this 108.08 to hold. So pretty much we want those two numbers to hold on the bond. If we pass those two numbers on the bond, then it's not good because then they could break this prior law of 10702 and go for a new law, which would be a 100% probability of a buy all the way to the 10330, right? And that would be really bad. That would be something in the economy, something in the forecast of the QT starting and the injections of money and the rate cut coming would be a negative uh, uh, for the bonds here because the bond is projected that QD is going to restart June, July, which is bullish for bonds and uh, bullish for the market, and that rates are going to decrease somewhere between June and September. If you see tomorrow after the CPI, the break of this 108.27 and that's 108 .08, Guys, be very careful because that would open the gate to the new low below the 107 all the way to the 104. 
And that would take the entire market by surprise because this would push probably the market back towards the 4,800 from where we are, right? So you need to be very careful. I am going to go still with the assumption that for now, the market wants to hold the 108, 27, 108 on the bonds and that the market wants to hold the 515, 517 on SPY. If that breaks, we need to be extremely careful. So let's go on SPY. We're going to do an entire market review. Then we'll look here. I prepared for you the probability power indicator patented screeners so that we can look for the best opportunity long term and short term in cryptos and in stocks right there. We'll go over them later on. And we are going to do uh, a quick review on some of the best stocks to watch for swing trading and long-term investing, and also your overall idea coming into CPI and PPI. So here is your probability box rule of thumb. We are approaching the top of the previous edge around the 524. But look at my next edge now. It's all the way to the 543. So I know we have 87% chance of a retracement, but I know that the retracement box is anywhere between that 525, 543. And one thing I told you before I left uh, with the vacation, the family vacation last week, is that you want to buy the edge here for maximum probability and success as the probability edge here because those are, are patented, they are really unique in design and intellectual property. And this is where you have the highest probability of success, right? Buy on blue, sell on purple, buy on blue, sell on purple. We are approaching the last third here, which is you have 66% chance to 87% chance that we are going to hit a wall and, and some retracement. But I told you before that you don't want to rush shorting a market that has the short-term trend signal up and the long-term trend signal up with the institutional net buyers and the retail net buyers. Because overall, you see, there are still net buyers. And I only short usually when I see a change in sentiment from net buyers to neutral to then down purple. So I'm going to go with the assumption that the pullbacks into CPI and LEI this week are going to be 515, 517.5. And I'm going to go with the assumption that even if we have a little pullback, they are still going to grind, breaking the 524 previous high and on their way to the 540s. I know market has been, has been grinding, grinding up, but until you have the probability power trend changing, what you think is not really important. The fact that I think this market is ridiculous doesn't mean anything. What means something is, look, you have a structural line here support at 460, you have division of thirds here at 450, you have another division of thirds here at 487, 492, and it's holding. And it's holding here, the, those high here, and the division of thirds here. So really, even if the market was to pump above the 425, 427, retrace all the way here to 492, to this 480 that we gave two weeks ago, right? The market would still be very, very strong anyway. As a matter of fact, I'd probably make the case that even if you go all the way to the trend line at 470, right here, to the 485, the market is still very strong. So people are going to continue buying the pullback, buying the pullback, because there is no other choice. You know, the feds, the feds are stuck here. They are stuck with low growth, right? high inflation, so it's stagnation, right? And printing in money. So if they decrease rate, more inflation. If they increase rate, more economical downfall and weakness. Feds are screwed here. 
<laughs> I mean, and and there was an interesting article here on Zero Edge talking about this, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Right there, yeah. Peter Schiff said here, you know, does the Fed hike rates even though there is a recession and even though the hikes will make this recession worse? Or will the Fed ignore the inflation problem like the PPI number this morning and try to rescue the economy by creating more inflation? So the Feds are really screwed. And I think they are going to do everything to prop all the assets. Even if we go back at 475, 485, it's a Christmas gift. They are going to do everything to push this market towards those 550 plus, right? Within the next six months. Yeah. You'll have pullback before the elections. But if you do have the break tomorrow of this uh, 517, right? 515, then you have that 508 break. 508 break brings you to the 470, 485. It's a Christmas gift because they have no other choice than printing, 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 opening QD and decreasing rates because the economy is not doing great. Guys. So they are really stuck, which means I would be very, very afraid of the next cycle because on the next cycle, three years, hopefully, who knows? I don't know. Maybe we'll get another president or not. But no matter what, it's 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 we need something that is going to inspire confidence for the next three four years in the cycle to continue this asset buying asset on pullback, right? Because otherwise we are screwed, and I would be very very careful in three four years that you you stay in your asset. But the, the thing is, the people who have assets. They keep up with inflation. So people who have homes, you've seen your homes going up 35 to 50% in the last four years. That's just a fact, nationwide. People who have stock portfolio have seen their portfolios flying 2023, end of 2023, beginning of 2024, right? So coming into tomorrow, the only way you are going to see if we have the retracement coming or not to that trend line is to look at that ZN number that I gave you, which is this 108.27 and this 108. If we break that, we open the dam for 104, which would be a new low on the bonds. And maybe at that point, they are going to start uh, cutting aggressively. you got to watch that head and shoulders that I was showing you 10 minutes ago. And by the way, we have a lot of updates that we do uh, live into the new Think Wealth uh, Differently community. It's the brand new community we opened last week. Guys, I have not even sent emails. Uh, here you have your classroom, your free classroom. So we are giving you a risk management class that is like two or three hours long. There was a master class that we charged for last year. The rule of third to master any indicator or box, box your trading ranges. Asymmetrical risk, credit spread, iron condor, iron fly, how to defend your options that go options, trades that goes bad. You have the calendar of events, so you don't have to chase us. When do we go live? When do we go to Zoom? Like next week, we'll do a three-day private event free on showing you step by step the pyramid of wealth, day trading, swing trading and the pyramid of wealth with asset protections, tax efficiency, all the stuff that I've done with infinity banking, life insurance, you know, annuities and stuff like that on also on how I buy real estate with that. So that will be next week. So all the calendar of event is there, your classroom are there. Then the community talk is here. Started posting stuff yesterday on how we did a little bit of trades, guys. I was showing like on the $400 trade yesterday, how I made 250. And I was trying to push the community to think about this. And this is very important. Okay. I was trying to, to, to push the community to think in terms of return on investment versus, oh, I want to make $1,000. I want to make $2,000. When you start thinking like this, guys, I'm telling you, I've done it for a long time. I have five kids, you know, three of my boys here, one in the military, the football one in the military. This summer is going to be at Fort Eisenhower in Georgia, right? 
and the other two are working, right? So I have kids that are maybe your age, between 20 and 30 years old, guys, all right? And I was trying to explain that to everybody in the community is you want to think in terms of return on investment. If Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time with 40 years of compounded return of 20%, and the true rate of inflation is 12 to 15%, each time you buy an option at 70 cents and it goes up 14 cents, it does not look like much. But if in 10 minutes your options went up 20%, and that's how you have to think, you beat Warren Buffett and you beat the rate of inflation. So it's all about taking a symmetrical risk. Small trades that get big. I repeat, small trades that get big. So where your downside is not a lot and now your upside is a lot so that you can fight this inflation issues that we have in the world. Compounded, tax returns, on tax returns, on returns, you know, when you have a 20% compounded of return like this, see, I made like 50% return in, you can see all the trades. I was posting my trades here, so you can see I was buying, let me show you here. So I was buying here the seven contract, and look, you can see the entire screen here. Seven contract at uh, 69 cents, 63 cents, 63 cents. It does not look much because you've seen me doing $20,000, $50,000 on the day trading zones channel. I'm trying to show you stuff that everybody can do. Everybody has $400. So you have 63 cents, 63 cents, 69 cents. Without false promises, then selling at $1.06 from the bottom 63 cents to $1.06, that's a rate of return of 58%. So you got to go for single and doubles. You don't want to go for the home run. Each time you are going to go for the home run, guys, you'll get destroyed. So get into the think well differently. There is a link, guys, uh, so that you can see the analysis. You can see the stuff, the interaction with the community. We just opened that last week. It's much better than the 600 people on Discord that does not talk. Discord sucks for people who are older like us. You know, we're more experienced. We're all there. This is a way better place to consume content, calendar, and the community, the questions that you have, the recap, the risk management, you know. Um, and then in the community, you have general discussion, uh, short-term options, swing trading. Uh, you have a service analysis, funded account, health, 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 wealth, and happiness because you cannot get health if you are not healthy and happy, right? So as traders, we get a lot of stress, guys. You know, uh, we, we, we really go through a lot of stress. You know, I'm 52 years old, and I try to keep in shape, take care of myself very, very much every day on a daily basis, cold shower. You know, I do hot room. I go at the gym at least four or five times a week. I play golf. I walk a lot. I go trailing in nature because, guys, we're inside. Trading and investing all the time. And you got to do it in an healthy way. Believe me, if you trade, 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 but you don't be, you're not careful about your health and your happiness. It's a three stool process to be grounded and successful, guys. So, anyway, we'll see you in the Think Wealth Differently. Remember, the link is above. I pinned it for you, guys. So, we'll see you there. Now, I wanted to show you couple of other charts besides the SPY and the ZM. One more. Let's look at the SPX and we'll look at the uh, NQ. Then we'll look at uh, opportunity for trading and cryptos and then we'll look uh, stock by stock individual. So look, if you look at the SPX, it's a perfect net buyer from institutional, net buyers from major trading block, net buyers from minor block long-term block, like, like shorting this is asking for trouble, you know? It's, it's very difficult, guys, right now to short, you know? Each time people have shorted, they've got pounded. So I was telling that in, in the uh, Think Wealth Differently community that if you are going to approach the short, approach the short in the smart way right now, which is number one, small sizes because everybody's buying the pullback big institutions everybody it's it's they are waiting with 
uh, a lot of money on the sideline. So small sizes or smaller sizes than your long. Two, less trades on the short side. Like really pick and choose your entry point at the edge of the calculators. For me, it's 527, 525 there. Let's call it 526 to the 550. That has a higher probability, right? Now, I have a super high probability to enter here, 470, 485 on the long side. If this thing pulls back one more time before it makes the double top, you know, uh, before the election, so past the election. Three, if you are going to do shorts, especially in options, I recommend most of your sizes close at 415 because we know the prevalent trend of the cycle is by pullback right now. That's it, until proven otherwise, that's what it is. For, for, for third, number B, if you are going to be short overnight, what I do, I tell you what I do, I stay no more than 300 delta. So it's relatively small, that's my max delta intranight when I look at my position short. And I have a lot, a lot of duration. I go September, January 2025 for the overnight. Because if I get clipped, and I think there's a way that it will rebound before my expiration, I might just, you know, uh, if there's a gap down, I might do a, a, a call credit spread against my 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 trade. Uh, I might do uh, a, a, add a put against my trade. There's a lot of ways that you can offset position. I can create a parachute trade, which you can learn the process of defending options, trades that goes badly here on your classroom. It's free. Classroom, investing, trading, click here. Go to the bottom, defensive strategy to protect Ion, condo and stuff. It's the same principle. I'll talk about the parachute trade on our three days event next week. We'll do a three day, one hour, every night event, Tuesday. I'll try to do next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Now, when you look at the SPX, it's the same principle. You know, it's blue, 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 blue. So at the very least, coming into CPI tomorrow, I want to see if we are sustaining above or below the 40, 52.75, right there. So 52.75 is going to be a huge, huge resistance for tomorrow's CPI and LEI. Then if we stay and sustain above the 42.75, we're on our way here towards the 5,500, 54.75. So my guess is tomorrow the big number to watch is this. Gap up, gap down, are we below or above this 52.75? If they start selling off, look at the edge retracement, which will be the 49.40. 49.40 on the SPX, you know, over the next few weeks could be the, the next one. And then the 4,800 right there, those division of third. If they've gone up since last time, yeah, but that, that would be about it, about here, you know, it's 4,600, 4,900. Also, if you put a structure line from the low of October, September, so you go from the low to the minor low before the high, it projects us here. So it projects us at that 4,600, which is exactly where the division of third is. So you have a really good game plan, but before you do that and you jump on the short, make sure that at the very least on your five minute charts, your hourly charts, your day trading charts, whatever you use, that the short term power trend signal is flashing down, that you have net seller here, net seller here, net seller here on the gap. If this is not down, be very careful. Do not jump into the short. So now you have three layers. So let's repeat and recap the three layers for the stock review. Number one, going into tomorrow, you look at the ZN 108.27 as the critical head and shoulder level with the 108.08. The number two recap is the SPY. If SPY breaks 517, 515, you're on our way to 508 again. 508 has been a huge number in pushing the short. It will dump the short all the way to 470. Number three, we looked at the 45, 
75, uh, sorry, 42.75 going into tomorrow, 52.75 SPX is going to be your critical number. Okay, so I hope it was helpful. Your likes, comments are appreciated.